So now we will move to the synthesis of another important vitamin called biotin. This biotin plays a very very important role in physiological process like gluconeogenesis and fatty acid biosynthesis. So obviously a lot of interest was there in early 60s, 70s, 80s to synthesize this biotin. So today we will talk about uh, one total synthesis of biotin and when you look at this molecule immediately you can see that there are 3 contiguous stereocenters. So 1, 2, 3. These 3 are chiral centers and they are contiguous and there is one tetrahedrothiophin ring ok. You can see completely reduced thiophin ring and there is a 5 carbon side chain having carboxylic group at the terminal end. Then you also have a cyclic urea ok. You have a cyclic urea then if you look at the whole biotin the difficult part is the carboxylic acid and these 3 chiral centers. How you are going to introduce these 3 chiral centers stereoselectively so that biotin can be made in naturally occurring form. So the first synthesis was reported by Roche group and here they used a very interesting intramolecular 3 plus 2 cycloaddition of a nitrone and an alkene. They started with a naturally occurring amino acid a cysteine actually they used a dimer of cysteine cysteine and they tried this intramolecular 3 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction. So what is this 3 plus 2 cycloaddition between nitrone and alkene? This nitrone when you look at nitrone, nitrone is nothing but if you have an imine and if the nitrogen is oxidized ok, the oxide of nitrogen ok, normally you know you talk about N oxide, N methyl morpholine N oxide, trimethyl I mean N oxide. So here nitrogen of imine if it is oxidized then that is called nitrone and this nitrone if you look at carefully it has one electron deficient end and one electron rich end. So, it is a distributed over 3 atoms ok. So, when you do a 1, 3 dipolar cycloaddition with an alkene and if the alkene is electron rich then this is what the stereo regiochemistry of the product which you get ok. So, obviously this is electron rich and this is electron deficient. So, you can see the bond forming between these 2 carbon atoms. Likewise, when you use electron deficient dipolarophiles ok, then what will happen? This is electron rich and this is electron deficient. So, this is where the bond will form and the regiochemistry will be reversed ok. So, this nitrone alkene cycloaddition has been successfully used to make 5 membered ring which you can call it as isoxazolidine ok. But contrary to 4 plus 2 cycloaddition that is our diel sol reaction, here the secondary orbital interaction is not there or it is very very minimal. As you know when you talk about 4 plus 2 cycloaddition or diel sol reaction, the secondary orbital interaction is important for getting endo isomer as the major product. Since this nitrone alkene cycloaddition that is 3 plus 2 cycloaddition does not or involve very little amount of secondary orbital interaction, you do not have to get only the endo product as the major product. In fact, you get exo product as the major product and the formation of exo or endo is mainly controlled by your substrate or if you are using a catalyst. Mostly it gives the exo product and if you take this cyclic nitrone and treat with dipolarophile like acronitrile then you get this as the major product this is nothing but exo product. And here um, this is a bottom phase approach of the uh, dipolarophile that means 
you have the nitron like this and your dichlorophyll attacks from the bottom okay, to give this as the major product. And there are several intramolecular 1,3 dipolar cycloaddition between a nitrone and alkene present in the same substrate is reported. For example, you can see this molecule, this can be redrawn like this. Now, this O minus will attack here and this double bond will attack and the positive charge on the nitrogen will be neutralized to get this tricyclic ring. Okay. And this is the isoxazolidine and this endo bond can be easily cleaved with zinc and you can also cleave it with hydrogenation condition, you can also cleave it with LAH. So, that will give you amino alcohol. And this is another example, this is intermolecular and still you can see there are 3 chiral centers, okay. 3 chiral centers one can fix during this 1,3 dipolar cycloaddition depending on the nature of your substrate. Okay. Now again if you cleave this NO bond, okay, so that will give you this amino alcohol and when you use LAH not only the NO bond gets cleaved but also the ester. So you get 2 hydroxyl group, one primary and the other secondary in addition you get a secondary amino group. Okay. And this also can be rewritten like this. So, I also will show you another example of intramolecular nitron alkene cycloaddition because this is important so that you will understand the 1,3 dipolar cycloaddition which is involved in the synthesis of biotin as the key step. Okay. So, this starting material is called citronellol commercially available. This all treatment with methyl hydroxylamine it forms a nitrone and the nitrone undergoes 1,3 dipolar cycloaddition and it goes via this nitro. You can see this can be drawn like this a chair like transient state you can write and followed by formation of this 5 ohm buttery. Again you can cleave this you will get corresponding amino alcohol. Now let us see how this biotin was synthesized what was the retrosynthesis by Roche group. So what they did was they introduced an extra hydroxyl group in biotin that was the first retrosynthetic uh, you, you should not call it as disconnection but as introduction of additional functional group required for better disconnection. So why they introduced uh, a hydroxyl group because they wanted to use a 1,3 dipolar cycloaddition. As I said when you do a 1,3 dipolar cycloaddition between nitrone and alkene you get isoxazolidine. And if you cleave the NO bond you get amine and alcohol. So that is why they put deliberately put this hydroxyl group so that this hydroxyl group along with this nitrogen you know it can form during the dipolar cycloaddition. So then they said if, if you can look at this complex structure okay. So this is formed if you cleave this NO bond if you cleave this NO bond you will get this okay. But this isoxazolidine can be obtained from the nitrone, this nitrone and the double bond. Okay. Now this O minus will attack here and the double bond will attack. So it will form a 5 ohm bud ring. And this nitrone, I leave it for some time so that you can visualize. Any of you can discuss more when we talk about the total synthesis. Now, you just see can be obtained from this particular compound and which can be made from commercially available amino acid called cysteine. Okay. And from cysteine you can acylate with this carboxylic acid. So basically what you are doing is you are going to start with L-cysteine methyl ester and this acid chloride which you can make it in 3 to 4 steps. And it is a known compound. Okay. So le now let us see how the Roche group synthesized biotin. So they started with L-cysteine dimethyl ester then acylated to get this compound. Okay. Then the this is a dimer you should know that this is a dimer. 
S S and the dimer. So, you can cleave the S S bond with metal. So, for example, if you use zinc and acetic acid that S S bond will cleave and then you will get corresponding S H. The S H spontaneously will add to the triple bond, the S H will add to the triple bond and you will get in thio ether. Okay. Then what you do? You have to reduce the ester to aldehyde because aldehyde is required for making nitrone. Okay. So, you reduce the ester to aldehyde in one step with dibol, then you treat with benzyl hydroxylamine. Okay. So, when you treat with benzyl hydroxylamine, this aldehyde will form a nitrone. Okay. You can see the nitrone now. Now, once you have this nitrone, this undergoes an intramolecular 1,3 dipolar cycle addition that will give you the corresponding isoxazolidine. Okay. So, I leave it for a few minutes so that you know you can understand how this 5 membered ring is formed. Already I put the arrows properly, so it will be easy to understand. Nevertheless, from the stereochemical point of view, I leave it for uh, 30 seconds so that you, know, you can understand. Once you get this isoxazolidine, obviously the next step is the cleavage of the NO bond. Okay. So, you cleave it with zinc and acetic acid, you get the corresponding amino alcohol and the amine is already protected as N benzyl and you get the free hydroxyl group. So, you have to protect the amine once again. So, that was done with chloromethyl formate in the presence of base like sodium carbonate. So, now the amine is fully protected. Then you can hydrolyze this amide. Okay. The hydrolysis of this amide was done with barium hydroxide in reflexing dioxane water to give the corresponding carboxylic acid and amine. Okay. The amide was cleaved. Once this amino acid is formed, then what happens? The lone pair on the amine attacks this carbamate, then OME comes out. That leads to the formation of this urea derivative, cyclic urea derivative. Okay. This NH2 attacks the carbamate carbonyl, OME comes out and you get the corresponding the urea derivative, cyclic urea derivative. Can you redraw this? as this bicyclic compound. Okay, you can see first the cyclic urea, yes you have done the cyclic urea. Then attach this tetrahydrothiophene. Okay. You can see both the ring junction hydrogen are beta, so you have written beta. And next you have the 5 carbon side chain, that 5 carbon side chain with a hydroxyl and carboxylic acid. Okay. The same thing if you rotate it by 180 degree, rotate it by 180 degree you will get this. Rotate it exactly by 180 degree. So, the thiophene will come down and the, the urea, the tetrahydrothiophene will come down, the cyclic urea will go up. So, if you look at this structure, now what is missing or what you do not want? So, there are two things you do not want, one you do not want this hydroxyl group, two you do not want this benzyl group. So, if you can remove the hydroxyl and benzyl group that will lead to the formation of biotin. Okay. So, how it was done? You first try to remove the hydroxyl group. When you treat with thionyl chloride, first the carboxylic acid will become acid chloride. Okay. Then that hydroxyl also will attack the thionyl chloride and it forms the half thionoester. Okay. So, this you have a lone pair on the sulfur of tetrahydrothiophene that will intramolecularly attack and your OSOCl will go out. So, that will form a three membered ring with sulfur having a positive charge. 
Now what will happen? The chloride which comes out, okay. So now if you see here the SO2 will come out, which is a neutral molecule, the chloride which comes out, again it will attack. So it is a double SN2 reaction on that carbon. So you get again the beta chloride, okay. Now the chloride can be removed with sodium borohydride and HBr water not only hydrolyzes the ester but also removes the benzyl group to give biotin. Okay. So to summarize this in 1982 Roche group discussed the, the first enantioselective selective total synthesis of biotin and they use the amino acid L-cysteine which is a dimer of L-cysteine and they used an intramolecular nitrone olefin cycloaddition to fix the stereochemistry of nitrogen and the hydroxyl group. The hydroxyl group as you know it has to be removed but nevertheless to fix the stereochemistry of C N bond they use the intramolecular nitro olefin cycloaddition reaction. Overall this synthesis was done in 11 longest linear steps and the yield was impressive of about 8 uh, percent. Even though the molecule looks small overall yield of 8 percent is uh, considered uh, a decent, decent one for such molecules. Okay. So now we will move to the synthesis of other natural products having 5 m ring. So we have been discussing about uh, total synthesis of penicillin type antibiotics and we will continue our discussion on one more natural product close to this. So that natural product is called lactocysteine. This was isolated in 1991 by Omura and his group and the structure was illustrated by various spectroscopy techniques uh, particularly the X-ray was very helpful and if you look at this molecule closely it, it has two amino acids. So one, one here and then second one is here. So two amino acids and then uh, N-acetylcysteine is also part of this atomic acid derivative. The first total synthesis of lactocysteine was reported by E. J. Corey a, a year after it was isolated and his synthesis involved many key reactions which I will discuss when I talk about uh, the retrosynthesis as well as is uh, synthesis. The first obvious disconnection of uh, Corey's retrosynthesis of lactocysteine was to cleave this bond. Okay, that actually simplifies the natural product so into two fragments. So now this carboxylic acid, okay, if you look at carefully, so you have a carboxylic acid here and then a lactam. Okay, and of course you have two hydroxyl groups here, there are four functional groups, a carboxylic acid, a 5 member lactam and two hydroxyl groups both are secondary. Okay. So if you look at this how he has made this compound from this particular compound you can see you have the hydroxyl group is still intact, the second hydroxyl group is still intact and this one that is CH2OTBS. Okay. So that will form carboxylic acid that will become carboxylic acid is a latent functional group transformation. Then if you cleave this, if you remove this CH2 then this NH can cyclize with this, this N can cyclize with this that will form the 5 membered lactam. Okay. Now let us see how he made this precursor. So this precursor he made it from here. So just you have to generate anion and then quench with an electrophile. And this is nothing but you know if you have to make this you can make it from another commercially available amino acid called serine. Okay. Serine is nothing but Okay. So this is serine, so from serine one can make this in two steps. So that was a commercially uh, available starting material also. You take this compound and treat with LDA. So LDA generates 
anion here and quench with isobutyl aldehyde. So, when you quench with isobutyl aldehyde, now you can see he has introduced one more chiral center. Okay, already there was one chiral center here, second chiral center here. So, he introduced the third chiral center which is very, very important. Now, you treat with trifluoroacetic acid. So, the trifluoroacetic acid removes this protecting group. So, that gives you the corresponding N benzylated amine, then the CH2OH. So, you remove that and then you get the amino alcohol. So, that was redrawn like this. Okay, I will leave it for a few seconds so that you know you should be able to understand. The CH2OH is beta, so it is beta and then NH benzyl is there. Take this compound and then treat with TBS chloride. So, TBDMS chloride, you can protect the primary alcohol. Okay, you protect the primary alcohol as TBS ether. Then treat with toluene sulfonic acid and formaldehyde. This is NH and this is OH. Okay, you can see NH, OH. And if these two are protected with formaldehyde, again you will get a 5 membered ring, isn't it? Again, you will get a 5 membered ring. So, so that is what happened. Okay, you can see you protect this amino alcohol. Then the ester you could reduce with uh, lithium borohydride to get the primary alcohol. Then swan oxidation will oxidize the primary alcohol to corresponding aldehyde. So, this is the key fragment which you could make in few steps starting from commercially available amino acid called serine. <coughs> then you take this 2-dimethylphenol, 2,6-dimethylphenol and then treat with propionic anhydride, you get the corresponding ester. That compound upon treatment with LDA, you generate anion, you generate anion then quench with this aldehyde. Okay, it is an aldol reaction, basically an aldol reaction and you get this aldol. Okay. Now, from here how he goes to this one carefully observe. Okay. You have the aldol, next you have to remove this CH2, you have to remove this CH2. At the same time you also have to remove the N benzyl. So, if first if you do hydrogenolysis, what will happen? The benzyl group will be cleaved. The benzyl group will be cleaved. So, that automatically once it cleaves, it will attack this carbonyl group and you have a good leaving group. 2,6-dimethylphenol, phenol is a good leaving group okay? and that will give this intermediate. Okay? So, easy to visualize because I have to I have rotated 180 degree. So, that is why I am just leaving it for some time. From the natural product side you know you have to write like this. So, that is why I have rotated 180 degree. I leave it for some time. Okay. This portion this portion has come to the right side. Okay. That is why everything is exactly opposite. Okay. Now, TBS was removed with HF, then swan oxidation gives the corresponding aldehyde. Okay, swan oxidation gives the corresponding aldehyde. Next step is oxidation of the aldehyde to corresponding carboxylic acid following Phoenix protocol. Then treat with 1,3-propane dithiol. What will happen when you treat with 1,3-propane dithiol? 1,3-propane dithiol in the presence of HCl, this CH2 that is formaldehyde, isn't it? That CH2 when it is cleaved under acidic condition, it is formaldehyde. That formaldehyde will be protected with this 1,3-dithiol and leaving out your amino alcohol. Basically, you are cleaving that protecting group with 1,3-propane dithiol with HCl. Okay? 
So now as I said there are 4 chiral centers in lactocysteine, lactocysteine 1, 2, 4, all 4 are done. Okay. Now we have to attach the thiol side chain. So that you can do from cysteine, okay. the cysteine N, N is protected as acetate and then the carboxylic acid is protected as allyl ester. Okay. So now you couple this with uh, carboxylic acid, so you get the corresponding thioester. Okay. So what is left? You have to remove the allyl group. Okay. So how do you remove allyl group? Palladium catalyst. So if you treat with tetrakis palladium in the presence of formic acid, so you get lactose. So basically this was a very elegant total synthesis starting, starting from commercially available amino acid called serine. See there are two amino acids he used, one serine, another one is cysteine. Okay. Other chiral centers he used based on these two amino acids. So this was the first total synthesis reported by E.J. Kore <coughs> and the key reactions are aldol reaction, mainly, mainly aldol reaction and then two types of protections he carried out. So that was important while carrying out the next aldol reaction. Overall this synthesis was accomplished in 14 steps and he has to use uh, few protecting groups. See when you use once protection you are adding two reactions. If you use more protecting groups accordingly you have to multiply it by 2 because one step is required for introduction and one step is required for removal. So that is how the number of steps has increased to 14 and with the overall yield of 6 percent. Then the second total synthesis was reported by Balbin in 1994, 2 years after A.J. Kore reported the total synthesis. And here again he started with another commercially available amino acid glutamate and let us see how he made this. His retrosynthesis again as you know the, the cleavage of CO, CS bond is uh, the first thing. Then he, he wanted to introduce the hydroxyl group here using a dihydroxylation method. If you have a double bond then you can do dihydroxylation and then selectively cleave one of the hydroxyl group. Okay. So he wanted to do that and then this chiral center he wanted to introduce using aldol reaction. Okay. So, so that aldol reaction will give this compound and this can be obtained from amino acid, so glutamic acid. Okay. So now let us see how he started and then how he got uh, uh, the synthesis of lactocysteine. So glutamic acid, pyroglutamic acid and uh, treatment with thionic chloroethanol, you convert that into ester, ethyl ester and ethyl ester can be selectively reduced in the presence of lactam using lithium borohydride to get the corresponding primary alcohol. This upon treatment with the paratoline sulfonic acid and benzaldehyde, you get the bicyclic ring and one more chiral center is fixed. Okay. With this one can generate anion here and quench with methyl iodide to get the methyl group. Then you introduce a phenyl selenide group, introduce a phenyl selenide group here by treating with LDA and quenching with phenyl selenide bromide uh, followed by treatment with ozonolysis. You introduce or you oxidize the phenyl selenide group to phenyl selenide oxide followed by elimination to get that double bond. And as I mentioned, uh, once you have the double bond, the next step is the dihydroxylation. So the dihydroxylation, uh, before doing the dihydroxylation, he wanted to do an aldol at this carbon. So at this carbon means you know alpha, beta, gamma carbon. Because if he does dihydroxylation at the double bond, then the gamma position, it will be difficult to acylate or do aldol reaction. So what he did, he wanted to do the aldol reaction first. So he treated with the TBS triflate and then 2,6-lutidine. So that form the diunylate, the diunylate was quenched to form the corresponding TBS ether. So this is almost now we can see it is like pyrrole ring. 
isn't it? The pyrrole. Now, if you treat with isobutyraldehyde in the presence of Lewis acid like tin tetrachloride, the aldol reaction takes place at gamma carbon. Okay? So, that is how we can see this stereo center was fixed. So, now you need one more hydroxyl group at this beta carbon. Again, the free hydroxyl was protected followed by osmium tetroxide treatment, you got the diol. Okay. Now, you have a tertiary alcohol and secondary alcohol. The secondary alcohol should be intact, but tertiary alcohol should not be. So, what you did cleverly, you treated with CDI that is carbonyl diimidazole. So, that reacted with uh, tertiary alcohol to form the corresponding thio, uh, thio derivative. So, now this type of derivatives are known to undergo deoxygenation. If you take this compound and treat with tributyl tin hydrate in the presence of AABN, okay, so that will undergo deoxygenation. Okay. So, only problem is this methyl group okay, that chiral center is not one isomer. Okay. Nevertheless, you treat with sodium hydroxide. So, sodium hydroxide will hydrolyze the acetate as well as it will epimerize this. Okay. Sodium hydroxide will hydrolyze the acetate as well as it will epimerize the carbon adjacent to the carbonyl group. Done. Then this protecting group can be easily cleaved by hydrogenolysis. So, you get a free amino alcohol. Okay. You have come up to very, very key intermediate now. How many chiral centers are fixed? 4 chiral centers are fixed starting with 1 chiral center of pyroglutamate. Then protect the primary alcohol as T S eater and secondary alcohol as acetate. Then remove the T S with 40 percent HF to get the primary alcohol. Okay. The primary alcohol what you want in lactocysteine is carboxylic acid, isn't it? So, in one part you can do with the Jones oxidation without touching the acetate, without touching the chiral center, the primary alcohol can be oxidized to carboxylic acid in 15 to 30 minutes. Okay. Once you have the carboxylic acid, then the acetate group can be cleaved with the sodium hydroxide solution. Now you can see all the four chiral centers, all the four chiral centers are fixed, is not it? So, what he, what he has to do? He has to couple this carboxylic acid with the thiol and the thiol should be derived from cysteamine. So, he took cysteamine, then NH was protected as acetate and then carboxylic acid was protected as allyl ester. Then this thiol can undergo coupling with carboxylic acid. Yes, it went and it formed the corresponding thioester and what is required? for the total synthesis of lactocysteine is to remove the allyl group. So, the allyl group can be easily removed with tetrakis triphenylphosphine palladium and the formic acid and triethylamine lead to lactocysteine. Okay. So, this is one of the simple and straightforward total synthesis of lactocysteine uh, starting from pyroglutamate and it was also reported uh, 3 years after the isolation of lactocysteine. And the key reactions involved in the synthesis of uh, um, lactocysteine by Baldwin a stereoselective aldol reaction. If, if you look at the siloxy pyrrole, the aldol reaction took place at the gamma position. Okay. The gamma position that is our first key reaction where the quaternary center was incorporated with the chiral center. Then the, this side aldol reaction and finally attachment of the cysteine. Overall, this sequence took about 20 steps, slightly longer than what Corey has reported. Nevertheless, the starting material is commercially available that makes huge difference and it is not expensive. And the overall yield compared to Corey's, Corey's was 6 percent and this is about 4.27 percent. Okay. So, with this uh, we complete the total synthesis of 500 uh, you know, antibiotics. So, we will move to the next natural products having 6 homebuilding as the core structure. Okay. Thank you.